What's up everyone? Today we're going to go over code 1423, maximize points from cards. So this is how I'm going to outline the video. First, I'm going to go over what the question is asking. Then I'll talk about a dynamic programming or memoization approach. It time limits exceeds, but I still want to go over the theory because it helps us with our dynamic programming knowledge. Then I'll go over the sliding window approach, which is efficient. Then we'll look at the visualization and finally go over the space and time complexity. The input is going to be an integer array and an integer K, which is the number of moves we're allowed. The output is going to be the maximum sum we can get using our moves. A move is defined as selecting a number from either the beginning or the end of the array. For example, if we have three moves for this array, Say we select the first one, then we the two, then the three as our three moves. So our first move, second move, and third move. Our score is going to be six. If we select the first one as our first move, the last one as our second move, and the last six as our third move, our score is going to be eight. If we selected the last one as our first move, the last six as our second move, and the last five as our third move, our score is going to be 12. That's the output for this question. When dealing with dynamic programming, we know we're looking for subproblems. So the question we're asked is, given an array and let's say three moves, what's the maximum sum we can make? Well, after I make one move, I pretty much have the same problem again, I just have one less move and I have a shorter array. The question then becomes, what's the maximum sum I can have with two moves and a shorter array? Now, if we take it from the beginning, we have a shorter array and we have two moves. Whereas if we take it from the end, it's pretty much the same thing, except the shorter array is not from the beginning, but from the end. So this is going to be reduced down to this and this is going to be reduced down to this at every step we either take from the the front or the end and we ask ourselves the same question again what's the maximum we can do from the front or the end so after we get down to one possible move left we've hit our base cases so we know what to return when we're calling our function another thing you'll note is that this and this are repeated they are repeated recursions. So we know that we can cache our results to speed up the algorithm. Here's the code for the memoized approach. This is a global cache that gets initialized to the length of the array, it's 2D. So we're given an array in K. So I've just made the cache using the two-dimensional integer array. So for the helper method, I called it memo, we, get, we take the array and then the leftmost and rightmost and we pass in K. So our base case is, is that if we only have one move, we just return either the left or the right. And if we've cached the result already for indexes from L to R, so that if it's not zero, then we return what's in the cache. Otherwise, we're going to calculate. We pass the L plus one to R with one less move than K for the left side recursion. Then we store that LR in here. And this is going to be the left potential side. So we take the ARR of L and add it to the left recursion. Similarly, we do that for the right side and we cache both results. Now, before we return this recursive call, we're going to get either the math of max of left or right, cache that, and then results. So how do we get sliding window for this problem? Here's our example from below and we have three moves. The blue dashes represent which numbers we've picked. So for example, we get six if we pick one, two, and three. We get four if we pick one, two, and one. Now keep in mind, it doesn't matter which order we pick. So it doesn't matter if we pick one, two, and then one, or we pick one, one, and then two. We're still gonna have a score of four. Similarly, for this third possibility, it doesn't matter if we pick one, one, and six, or we pick one, six, and then one. We're still going to get a score of eight. For a score of 12, we'd had to pick the last three numbers. Now, look at it a little bit closely. 
we don't have a sliding window for the numbers we are picking, but we have a sliding window for the numbers we are not picking. You see how the sliding window is covering the numbers that we have not selected. So the sum for this would be 16. The sum for this would be 18. The sum for this would be 2 plus 3, 5, plus 4, 9, plus 5, 14. And the sum for this would be 10. So how can we use the sliding window to get the sum for our maximized approach? Well, if you notice, these numbers, if you add them up, 12 and 10, 8 and 14, 4 and 18, and 6 and 16, sum up to a total of 22. This number doesn't change because it's the sum of the entire array. So we're going to be using to, a sliding window to keep track not of the numbers we've picked, but to do the inverse, to keep track of the numbers we haven't picked and subtract that sliding window sum from the total num sum of the array. That's going to be how we keep track of the maximum score that we can get from our moves. Here's a visualization to help you understand better. Here's the code for the visualization you just saw. First, we take our array and then we accumulate the sum of all the integers. Then we initialize the window sum, which represents the sum of the numbers that we have not selected. And we are not going to select n minus k numbers at any given, of any given point in time because we have k moves, so we're left with n minus k. Now, once we sum up the first n minus k numbers, our first potential answer is going to be the total minus the first window. Then we begin sliding the window and we add the newest number and take away the oldest number. So each iteration we check if we have a new number which is greater than the one that we have calculated previously. So that's how we return it. Let's look at the space and time complexities. The space complexity is constant. We didn't use any auxiliary arrays or any additional data structure, so it's O of 1. The time complexity is going to be O of n because we've iterated over the array of length n. So that's how you solve LeetCode 1423. If you liked the video, please thumbs up, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe.